feeling in there. Good, good, good. Unfortunately, tomorrow they're not able to open because they can't get the staff. So tomorrow, before they go up to Devon Broadway, which is about a two-minute drive, they're going to have to come back and get the staff. Yeah, so it's a bit of a shutdown. Greg's a shutdown? No, no, no. What? <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's that one. Yeah, that's fine. No, I know Greg's is open up. I'm in there every day. So, uh, second session of the day, we have Nathan Everton. So, I'll tell you how I met Nathan. I was a uh, Nathan organized a seminar with a couple of UFC fighters at his gym. I went along to the seminar. The seminar was okay. I was teaching some stuff. And some of it was okay, something I've seen before. Uh, those guys finished, so I put them on my trousers trying to sneak out the door. Because, uh, and then Nathan was going to teach, and I thought, who's this guy? Oh, I'll just go, I was just going to try and run out the door and go home. Saw him teach for five minutes, was like blown away with his level of skill, his level of teaching ability, his coaching ability, how much he knows about grappling is phenomenal. He is one of the best coaches I've ever, ever trained with in grappling. So you're going to get loads of good stuff for that. So give him a round of applause, please. Go. <laughs> Subject of the day is going to be uh, for this session the turtle. Okay, so come on all fours. Came about because Tom was teaching tomorrow, said he was going to call his session Mount of Death. And I was like, what? So I was like, well, mine's called Ninja Turtle then. So now then I have to come up with what I was actually going to do around that. Okay, but the turtle position is something we use a lot. Um, I generally got into the grappling because I was interested in grappling. I got through uh, a guy called Jeff Thompson in Coventry. And then from that, I started training some guys, and my students started getting quite good. I started fighting a lot. I had three guys in the UFC and a bunch of guys in the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, I was training. Uh, I trained Dan Hardy, Andre Winner, um, Jimmy Woolhead, Nick Shipshack, a lot of different guys. So most of my grappling was MMA based. Um, I still do lots of jiu-jitsu. That's you know kind of what I'm into. But I was just saying earlier to, to, to we were just talking. Most of what I learned. Um, was by necessity. I didn't have coaches, but my guys would be like, right, we're starting to fight some wrestlers, or and as we got bigger and bigger, so right, we're fighting American wrestlers, we're fighting our next three fights against Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts, our next fight, you know, like, like we were calling for, we did fights in Vegas and Abu Dhabi and Cologne and Warsaw, we used to travel doing fights for about five years, that's all we did. Um, so everything that we came up with, uh, we didn't have coaches to ask, I would kind of come up with it and come up with a game plan for them and then work it out as we went along. So um, a lot of what I do is a mix of all different arts, mix them together, but just purely so we work in a fight, that was it. There was nothing passing down from a coach or anything like that. It was, we've got a fight against this guy, we need to make sure we can stop what they're doing. Um, so the, the UFC fights, we did, we did 10 UFC fights, and we had eight wins and two losses by decision, which were split decisions. So we pretty much managed to shut out everyone that we fought and um, usually get our game going. Okay, so what we're going to do today is a mix of different arts. And it's kind of a hybrid thing. So the turtle position. Is okay. so now on the fours. So is in the turtle position. So we're going to move around a little bit, but we're a bit tight in space. Okay, so you can put your head this way and your feet this way, and you just go into a tight turtle position. So you've got your elbows in. Okay, that's it. So I want everyone to kind of orientate themselves this way when you're with your partner, just so um, we're not crashing into each other when we start to move, and also so that um, I can quickly scan across and see if someone's doing something different. Uh, we will be coming around to the back and we will be working at the front, but to start with, we're going to work at the side. We're going to say what's called a side right. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go directly parallel to him like this. And this hand is going to go inside the leg, called a crotch right. Okay, we go inside and just hook inside the crotch here like this. I'm not going deep. If I go deep, he might wrap my elbow and roll me over. Okay, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to put my hand inside. And my weight is going to be across the lower back. And I'm actually going to try and pull him a little bit towards me. Okay? If I've got him over this near leg, that's totally fine if his, if his butt drops down. If this hip goes down, then I'm going to end up in his guard and it's going to roll in. So I'm actually going to bring him a little bit this way. So I'm side on parallel. This hand is going to go inside the leg. I'm going to pull out. And I'd like to post my foot out. And this hand here is going to grab either the bicep or the wrist. Okay? I'm making sure that he can't reach back with that hand and get hold, get his arm behind my back or anything here. So we're not far forward. We're across the hips, this hand is going to be inside the crotch. My knee is against his knee, I'll switch around in a moment. And my head is down and I'm holding onto the bicep. Okay, so I'm just showing it inside. <coughs> my knee is against the knee. Okay, so I'm totally parallel to him. This hand is inside, nice and shallow. 
and I'm going to pinch back to his hip here. So I'm pulling him towards me, my head is down, and I've got my hand on the bicep, or I'm holding the wrist. Okay? The wrist was something I never used to do, and then I saw the um, Nick Diaz fight against GSP, uh, uh, UFC 158. And uh, from here, GSP was grabbing the wrist to throw the knee so he wouldn't get his leg caught. Okay, and I started adding that in from that. Again, everything's always been necessary. So I see something work in a fight, I'm going to have it straight away. So the hand is inside, I'm going to pinch in, head down, and get tails. I'm going to try this position out. This is called the side ride, it's a wrestling position. And then in a minute, we're going to strike from here and start moving him around from here. Okay, so everyone's going to orientate himself with a partner, head this way, feet this way. And I just want you to just try and get to this position. I want you to check each part of your body and just go, is my right hand in the right place? My left hand, where's my head position? Where are my legs at? Is my weight on him? And then we're pulling him towards me. Okay, so grab your partner, just let get, get that position down, and then we'll start hitting him. <laughs> grab your partner, person who's on all fours, head that way, feet that way. Pinch your elbow in, across the lower back. Okay, with the weight across the lower back. Keep your elbow pinched in, elbow pinched in. Make sure the hand is inside the thigh. Excellent, okay, other side, have a go. Make sure everyone's inside the thigh. Okay, you try the position now. Anyone's ever done knee on stomach, you want the leg bent because if my leg's straight, if he moves, I can't go anywhere. If it's bent, I can move around. Okay, so we keep that flexed. So the first thing from here, obviously I'm going to start hitting. Okay, now I'm just come around this side so you can see his head because that's what I'm going to, where I'm going to hit. So I'm here like this. Okay, first shot is uh, the hook. Okay, so I'm going to turn my knuckles towards him and just start hitting here towards the temple. Okay, and then behind the ear and the neck and all around here. Okay, I'm not going to try and hook like this because the angle is so tight. I'm going to end up damaging my wrist. So I'm going to turn this way and just go in this way like this here. Just bring it around. Okay, so I'm starting to hit. And I'll, unless he moves his elbow forward, I'm actually going to find a gap. Because if he just keeps his elbow back like that, if he move, I can go this side of his hand, I can keep moving like that and keep hitting him. He's going to have to bring this up if he really wants to stop me getting that shot in. Okay? If he keeps the elbow back, I'm going to keep hitting him. Once I've hit him a few times on one side, I'm going to hammer fist on the other side. And it needs to be loose, okay? like a mace. You know, it's not, I'm not hitting him with a stick. It's like, it needs to be relaxed, okay? So I'm going to hit him here like this. Keep hitting him both sides, and he's going to have to bring those elbows in, otherwise I'll, I'll get that shot, and then I come up underneath here, okay? And these are my shots to start with. So my head is down, I'm holding the hip, and I want my hip close, and I want to pull him slightly toward me here like this, okay? So my weight is now hanging on him. I'm going to hit, 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 and then straight up the middle, over there. Okay, so I'm throwing these shots into this side. I'm going in front and behind, trying to hit behind the ear, trying to hit the neck, trying to hit the temple. And then I'll whack him on the other side into his neck, into his ear, and then I'll come up underneath the armpit, smash straight across, and then back in again. Back in again, okay? Just pushing a little bit off this foot to get that shot in each time, okay? So, my knee's against his knee, my hand is inside. I'm not flaring my elbow up, I'm pinching it in. My head is down, and I'm going to hit, hit. I might take a little look while I'm doing this, and then drive up underneath. Remember, if his elbow stays back, and he's just got his hand there, I can find a gap around there, okay? Hopefully not following those guys with a hand that's bigger than his head. But if, if, he's, if he's got a small hand like that, I can get around it like this. I can start hitting, I can start hitting here. And then if he brings both parts of his arm to defend his head, Okay, like this, because you wouldn't defend punches like, like that all the time. You cover up here, like stand up. It's the same thing. But then I'm going to come up underneath, boom, hit that chin, hit that chin. This works great if you can get him up against the cage. Mm. If you can get him pinned up against the cage here, you just work him over. Just work him over. So once you grab a partner, 
Try that out. Switch in your own time, but still orientate yourself this way so I can quickly look around and scan. But switch over in your own time. Have a few goes each. So if I feel like I want to move to the other side, often that's because I feel this hip maybe tilting a little bit. I'm going to go around to the back first. Okay, so I'm going to go behind and then to the other side. So I want to kind of monitor where we're going. Okay, so from this position, my hand is inside. If I struggle to get the fingers in there sometimes, so often I'll just make a fist and slam this down. Okay, so I get amber eyes and show the kind of feel show the camera. Okay, like this inside the left. My head is in. So I've been hitting him. I've been hitting him. I want to go behind. Okay, I'm going to put my weight on his lower back. Okay, um, whenever you put the weight on someone in turtle, one of the key things is if I'm at the front, the weight goes this half here. If I'm at the back, the weight goes this way. Okay, so I don't want him to have the ability to lift my legs off the floor. If I'm at the front, and my weight is here, and he lifts his head up, I'm going to start to get airborne. So I keep the weight down at the front. And if I go behind, same thing. If I put the weight too far forward and lift his butt up, I go airborne. So if I'm behind him, I always want the weight down the lower back. Okay, so as we go behind, the weight's always going to stay down here. It's going to stay down here. The position I'm going to take behind is just put both hands inside the hips, so the weight is on the forearms here, and then my hips are close to his hips, like this here. Okay. Um, one of my fighters calls this prison jujitsu. Okay. So, <laughs> like okay, but I'm around here like this. Okay. My elbows are pinching and my weight is down. Uh, I was fortunate enough to train with Damian Meyer once, so this is actually how he, he uh, works around the back. Keeps his hands here like this. He doesn't do all this falling out stuff here, where the guy might start looking his feet inside my legs. I have to bring my legs into these anyway, so I'm going to be here. Okay, so my weight is on my forearms and off my knees. Okay, so my toes are just touching the floor a little bit, and the weight's on my forearms here. I switch to the side and hold inside the leg. I start to hit, start to hit, start to hit here, and then I bring my hands inside, not deep. Again, on all of these, I'm making sure it's just my wrist, so that you can't hook my elbow. Okay, I don't need to grab my elbow and roll me over. I don't want this to happen. Keeping my hands in. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go around to the back, stand nice and tight, and I'll come around to the side. Here, hit him, hit him. Trying to keep my weight on him as much as I can, trying not to make too much space. Here, hit him. I'll jump around to the back, keeping my hands in, and I'll come around to the side. Here, 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 hit him, hit him, hit him. Chuck around to the back, and then around to the side. Yeah. So switching your own time, you're going to put your weight on his lower back, so the weight's off my legs, like this. Okay. I actually give a little bump first. I give a little bump and move around. Okay. When you move, try and move people, they're trying to stabilize themselves, and that's easy for me to move around. Okay. Right, get my hand behind here, so I can move him a little bit. When he tries to stabilize himself, I'll use that to help me get around. Hit him under the jaw again. There's you pretty much always a gap with MMA gloves. I need to be able to get around the sides here, or I'll be able to get there. So, weight to his lower back, give him a little move, pinch him with my knees and my forearms, okay, here, and then around to the side again, hitting him, hitting him here, finding these gaps, finding these gaps, okay. Go behind a switch in your own time, try these side ride from the back position, throw punches as you go, okay. Uh, there's a bit of space outside if anyone wants to train in the wings of the ring. <laughs> 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 I was just saying a couple of times as we go around, my hands are really shallow. Just my wrists here, my elbows are back of the hips. I don't want to go deep where he's going to wrap over the top. And I want my hands available to grab stuff. I might wrestle him, I might jitsu him, I might hit him. If my hands are shallow, I can hit, I could lock up with my hands around him, or I can start to tilt him for jiu jitsu. Yeah. Are you squeezing with your knees? Or what? Yeah, a little bit. I'm pinching. My, my elbows are inside, I'm just on the outside of my elbows like this. Okay. So my hands being pretty shallow allows me to either tilt him to move him like this, it allows me to consider to go up and start to catch arms or go harness, or because they're shallow, I could, I could just hit from here. Sorry. Or if he started to try and step up on a foot, Okay, here I can start to grab his ankles, so I put weight forward. Or because my hands are almost touching, if he did actually stand up, so he put his step up one foot, stand up. As he starts to get up here, stand up, I can lock my hands. I can lock my hands and follow so I can step in. Straight back into my side right. Okay, straight back in. Boom, hit him there, okay. With my hands being here, I can hit, grab on his ankles or his hips, 
or lock them together. Okay, so I'm trying to wrestle them and stay with them. Okay, so down again. So, sometimes he'll feel like he wants to get up. Often he'll the hands and he'll start to, to stand up. Obviously, if he puts his hands on the mat, I can punch him in the face. That is an option. I'm going to do a position called a spiral right. What I'm going to do is this hand's going to stay inside the leg. This hand's going to go under the armpit. I'm going to keep my weight here and I'm going to start to circle. Okay, and again, if you wanted to watch that GSP fight versus Nick Diaz, he did this a lot. Diaz kept getting to here and he kept bringing him back down with what's called a spiral right. And the pressure, as suggested by the name, is kind of like a spiral. Okay, so we're here. He starts to get those hands on the ground. It starts to push up. So this hand can either grip all the way through here or just push forward. Okay, both are fine. I'm going to get on my toes and as he starts to get to his feet, he's going to run around. You see it's spiraling, pushing one hip up and one shoulder down. Okay, driving it down into the mat. So I'm here. He can even get up to his feet. He's going to run around. Short, choppy steps, running around, bringing him down. I push inside the leg. And I push occasionally, I'll catch the wrist as you are. Here. Okay, obviously for wrestling the spiral rod, he's into a half Just come around from here. But here, obviously I just put hook in. I could just stay on him, start hitting him, start hitting him. Um, GSP in his, his part was actually using it just to hit, and then occasionally he's bringing his foot in. And then try to make him turn to his knees, stay his back. But I like to just get him down to here and hold him. Just hit, and start hitting him. Just start hitting him. Just not working him over. And if he gets back to his knees again, so I'll give us a space. Back here, back to my side right again. Here, hit him under the chin, hit him in the face, starts to get up again. Bring him down, bring him down. He gets good up. Good, good up. Post that hand out again, I'm going to hit him. <laughs> yeah, if you see that pressure, that, that rotation pressure on it. So he's down again on the floor. I'm staying back to start with here. But if he gets those hands on the mat, and even if he starts to get to his feet, I'm going to fire here, drive him under the arm, keeping him up, chest facing the ground, and running around. Good, okay. You know, bent legs again so you can keep running around with short, choppy steps. It's called a spiral right. Try it out. So you break him down like this. Good. Break him down to this point. So grab a bottom, find suspension, find this out. Don't go explosive because you're going to smash the head into the ground. And remember, the more you resist, the more they're going to have to smash it in. Yeah, so, work well, together on it, yeah? Thank you so much. Have you got any problems? Just say, yeah, that's fine. If you don't break it all the way down to his hip, that's fine. The objective is to stop him getting away. Okay, so if you get him back to here, if he was like this and you make him like that, go back to the side, ride and hit him again. That's it. That's fine. There are lots of other things we can do from there, and we will do. Okay, so there again, if you can break him down, that is great. But I get to here, I'm round to the side, I'm hitting him. He starts to get up, his hands get on the mat, maybe even his feet get on the mat. This is a problem. Okay, so my chest is going to jump onto his back. I drive one hand forward, one hand back, and I run around. If he just gets back up to his knees, this is okay. This is okay, this is fine. Okay, as long as he hasn't got up and got away from me. I'm going to be hitting him here, I'm going to be hitting him here. He starts to get those hands on the mat. It might be only when he puts his hands on. There. Just fire forward. You can grab here if you want, but there is a slight wrist. There's a move where he can grab my arm, drop his shoulder, and jump over me. And get like into a side control type position. Okay, so I often, I often don't grab. I know guys who do, but I just fire my hand forward. Here, like this. Fire forward. Keep your hips parallel to the mat. Don't twist. Parallel to the mat. And circle. And circle. And I'll hit him, and I'll hit him. And I'll just get away from him. Start hitting him here. Get back to his knees. Just follow, just follow. Back to this position here. If you want to switch to the side, that's fine. Be here. Come around to the back. Around to the side. If he starts to get up again, get my hand underneath. Drop him down. Keep him down. Hit him. Start to get back up. Just follow with him. Stay with him, stay with him. Back into my side right again. Okay? So I'm trying to stay here. Behind him, hitting him, if he gets up, there's a little weight here, break him down, and then go back to the same position again. Okay? The whole time I'm actually trying to just stay behind this armpit. Okay, behind this armpit. So obviously if this armpit gets behind me, then he's got my back. Okay, so I'm working 
striking here, driving up in that space, and then getting back here again. I'm staying behind this line here of his armpits and working him over, controlling his hips, firing a hand out, firing a hand out, firing a hand out, staying behind his, this, this line, hitting him, getting to that line, smashing his face back into the ground, and then coming back here. Okay, I'm trying to stay away from this grip at the front. I'm trying to stay below that, behind him. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so a couple more goes, but try from the spiral ride, as he gets back up, <coughs> follow him back into the side ride again. So you do the spiral ride down, he comes back up, you go back to this position at the side. If you feel like you want to go behind and switch sides, then do that too. Okay, grab a final, a few more goes, let's try this out. Okay, let's bring it in, let's bring it in. We just deal with two little things we were just talking about, we have two little questions. Uh, what about a Nelson? Okay. Which we will do some Nelsons. And a uh, question about this, this back ride. So we'll just do this back ride for a minute. Okay. Okay. So it's down on all fours. The same with this back ride. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm really like kind of almost putting my weight, committing his weight to it. I still want contact with the ground, but my weight is kind of on my forearms. And one of the reasons is I want to slow down his movement and feel where he's going to go. Because the main things that are going to happen is he's either going to go forward and stand up or he's going to turn to the side. If he turns to the side, which is really common, I have to stay behind him. I have to stay behind him. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So the person on the bottom is just going to do this. The person on the bottom is just going to kind of rock down to their hip and rock down to their hip. And it's kind of a sensitivity thing here. As he moves, all I want to do is kind of shuffle around behind. Here. Because if I went the other way, look, I end up in his golf. Okay, if he drops down here, I end up in front of him. Okay, I've got to stay behind him. I've got to stay behind him. Okay, one of the drills we always do with fighters is this for the riding drill. Okay, so all that happens is he keeps his elbows in and he turns onto his side. Okay, so just turn to the side, that's it. So the first half is to stay away from his legs and then he goes up onto the knees. I come around to here, he turns. Okay, so the whole time I'm going away from his legs. Now if he turns on his side like that way, I end up in his guard. You know, if I'm on his back and he turns and I go in front of him, I end up in his guard. I'm trying to get, I want him to be like this, like, what, what, where is, like that the whole time. I want him to feel that way. Okay, so we go onto his knees again. So again, we're going to orientate ourselves this way, so it's very easy for me to quickly go across and see, see where we're all at. Plus, you can just copy exactly where we're at as well. We picked this up, uh, some of us were training with John Will recently, uh, me and Bob and Tony and everybody, and this is one of the ways he was teaching, and it was it made a big difference. It made a big difference of passing on information. Okay, and as a coach, I can quickly look across and see where everyone's at. So commit your weight to him. Your toes are just kind of like hovering on the ground. My weight's here. And this person's going to drop one hip to the ground and just want to shuffle around. Just shuffle around. Okay, here. So I'm behind. And then go back. And I'll flow with him. He goes again. And I just shuffle around. Yeah, it's just a drill. Just a feel. So the weight goes to him. And I just circle around. So just that a couple of times each. Okay, get this feeling of staying away from this front here. Okay, I'll... You should all know that if you just on it for a second. All martial arts, 12 on 12, it's not going to be very good. It doesn't move around, more of an advantage, more of an advantage. You're probably feeling pretty uncomfortable for more of an advantage. Grappling, striking, wrestling, this is always going to be the advantage. Okay, so if he's going to turn this way, I'm going to go this way. Yeah? So it's with my grappling, it's with everything. Okay, whether you're doing, you know, field ghost stuff later and you're hitting from around here. Okay, you're trying to take someone back. It's the same thing. The same thing. Okay. So grab your fly off, just try to stay behind. Stay behind. Okay, from the same position. Let's go. Everyone just come to this side, everyone to the one side. So another question over there about the Nelson, but hit the same way, keep the same way. Perfect. Why the spiral ride and not the Nelson? Nelson is very, very good for turning them over. Um, same as reaching across, so there's always that risk of them catching your arm and dropping you over. If I punch forward, my elbow's kind of down a little bit. When I reach up like this, there's always that chance of them rolling me over. Okay, rolling me over. Uh, I do like the Nelsons, you have to push the head down to hit the Nelsons. Um, since we're here at the side right, of which there's, there's a lot of Nelsons from here, um, we'll, do, we'll do at least one of those now. Okay, so the quarter Nelson's good from here, um, which is just a turn over this one. Yeah, but we're actually going to do the three quarter. Three quarter. Okay, so you guys are just wait, wait to move around just a little bit. Okay, so from the side right here, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hand on the back of his head and push his head down a little bit. This hand is going to come underneath, and I'm going to go along the jawline here. Okay, so 
and my thumb is coming around like this and I'm on it just underneath his jawline. This hand is going to go palm down. Okay, so I'm going to flip it and then I grip like this here. People use the vice grip often. Okay, if you've ever seen um, you know, Tent Planet stuff or um, guys like Jeff Glover, they use this here. Okay, but I find that the head can come up pretty well here. Okay, like that, and you can lift his head. Sorry, I'm going to use a three quarter. So this hand goes here, the other one goes across the jawline. So just underneath it, and my shoulder is underneath and my hip is still here. Okay, like that. Like this here. Now all I'm going to do is get on my toes, and I'm going to pull him towards my chest as I circle towards his leg. So I get on my toes, I pull him in like this. And I just circle. Uh, he just get back to his knees, he comes up. He comes over to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, he comes in. Again, super strong guys. Yeah, that's strong. It's hard on it. <laughs> Uh, a guy called Billy Robinson showed me this. Um, he's passed away now, but really good catch wrestler. Really good catch wrestler. Down. Against really strong guys, I'll sometimes turn him down two or three times. So just go back again. So often what I'll do is here, I'll be in this position here, catch hold of his head, reach through. So my shoulder is right into his armpit, and I grip up here. This really strong guy, sometimes I'll bump him down, he'll get back up. I'll let him up. So he comes up. Okay, go. Okay, go. Okay, you wait till he's a bit tired, and then. Lock up and finish with the DOS. Okay, so we're actually going to do the, uh, the turnover and we'll finish with the DOS. Okay, so again, I'm in the side ride. I'm over here like this. Okay, what I'm going to do is put my hand on the head. I like to do a little cut like that, just to twist his neck out of position and expose the jaw. This one comes over and I go into the jaw. See, I'm, my thumb follows his jawline here, goes basically behind his ear. Palm up, I do the S grip. Get on my toes. If I pull him towards my chest, pinching my elbows and running around, <laughs> brings it down to all fours here. Okay, if you've got a tight three quarter, if I squeeze, <laughs> it'll tap anyway, okay? But this is just a turnover. This is just a turnover. But again, with any of these, if he counters by sticking his chin up like that, just smack him, just smack him. Yeah. See when Dan Henderson four federal, you know, you get someone in this position, someone bases it, you just blast them with a shot. You can knock them out with it, coming up under their arm or around the arm. So as I'm pushing him down, spiraling him, pulling his head down, if you just go like this, that's, you're in the side ride, you're holding with one hand, you just launch with the other hand, and that's the knockout shot, as he lifts his chin up, and you just take it across, okay? But let's try the spiral, uh, the um, three quarter show, one more time. So we're here, I'm going to, the hand that's on the bicep grabs the head, and I like to grab the top corner, and just pull it in. I dig this one across the chest, turn this palm up and grip, you could just go here if you needed to, but, I like to grip my fingers, get on my toes, my armpit, uh, hit my shoulders under his armpit, my hip is towards his hip. The main thing is pinch your elbows and pull into your chest <coughs> as you circle there. Okay? The Dean Lister says every noise is a compliment. Okay? <laughs> Alright, uh, grab your partner, try the three quarter out. <laughs> 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 First thing, pinch your elbows in. You can't squeeze like this. Okay, cinching and grappling is two things. Pulling towards you and pinching your elbows in. Okay, whether you're doing a choke or you're doing a body lock or whatever, just pulling towards you is not, not no good. You gotta pinch your elbows and pull in to cinch something in nice and tight. Make sure your hips, same as a spiral, right? Make sure your hips are parallel to the ground. If you twist too much, you might get rolled. Okay, we might lose pressure, so we're gonna keep our hips down. So. We're here again. I'm in the side right. I grab his head, I pull it, I try and get this thumb up behind his ear. So I reach and try and get it behind his ear. I get my lock in with my palm up. I get on my toes here. Okay, now I'm not going to go for the submission as soon as I knock him down because he might just pop out as I get there. So I'm going to tire him out. I pull into my chest and I run around here. If he gets up again, I'll do the same again. I'll let him up here. I'll do the same again. Keep pinching, keep running him down so we're back in the start position again. Okay? What I'm going to do from here, put the hand on the back of the head, I'm going to jam my arm in so my bicep touches his neck, and then I'm going to grip my own, uh, well I say bicep, but I'm actually reaching to my tricep, walk my hand up the back, I'll do these details again in a moment, and then I'm going to push my chest out and start to squeeze. Okay. Um, has anyone not done the DAS choke, which is this, the, or the Bravo before? Has anyone not done it? A few of you. Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, you just want to come around this side so you can see, see the neck. You've got this side for me. Okay, so just drop down this. Okay, so it's an arm in choke. You can do chokes that are straight on the neck and the ones that have the arm in. 
Once I have the arm in, you have a bit of patience. It's often going to be a little bit slower. They're more secure. If you attack just the neck, like a guillotine, you can sometimes slide off. When you do like an arm in guillotine, and you catch around here, any choke where you've got both of these in, you've got a bit more security because you're hooked onto the armpit. But the arm's involved, so it's a little bit harder to choke. So you have to have a bit more patience. Whenever you put the choke on, you want to go to about 80% and just hold it for a bit, and then maybe go up a little bit, and then maybe go up a little bit. If I go 100% with this, if I go, and then relax, he knows he can take it, and that's a moment to get out. I want to squeeze, and squeeze, and squeeze, and squeeze. And obviously, over the years, your 80% will get better and better, but that 80%, you want him to go, this is, just, this is getting worse. Oh, it's getting worse. Right. The guys will just give in. If you get them pretty tight, and then you go a bit tighter, and a bit tighter, guys will just give in all the time, because they think, oh, this is it's never, it's never loosening up, it's only getting worse. You, know, you want to play those tricks on people a little bit sometimes. So when you get in, don't squeeze and let go. You never, you never loosen up. Once you're in, you never loosen up. Okay, so biggest mistake I see here is guys being directly side on. If I'm here, see my arms at my side? Just going across like that. I need to move around a little bit so that my arm is in front of his neck. Yeah, there's no point squeezing his chest, okay? So we're here. I'm gonna move around just a little bit like that. So my bicep is actually at his neck. I hit it at 90 and jam it in, okay? If it's here, it's gonna have trouble closing. And if it's here, there's too much of a gap between him, okay? So it's at 90 degrees, and I punch it in so it touches. Okay, so, sorry. I, I pull his head onto my arm. Okay, I make sure it's in nice and tight. If you've got someone who's got a super strong neck, I do what's called a short arm, which is I go here first. Okay, so I'm grabbing my own wrist and keeping his head in, and just put his head back. Okay, I keep that strong, and then I can just drop down from there. Okay, so I've pulled the head in, and I've caught the neck. I need to block the back of the head with my tricep. Here. My hand reaches as deep as I can. I want my wrist involved. I don't want the, my, my wrist like this. I want it locked in. And then watch this. My right hand is going to be raised by moving this hand. Watch, I walk this up. You see that squeeze is going to raise that hand up into his neck. So now that's tight. Don't squeeze the back of his neck. It's the front of his neck you've got to squeeze. So chest goes out, bicep goes down, and I pull my right elbow towards my chest like that. So what I'm doing is push down, push out with my chest, and pull in. It's so tempting to see this and go, and that's just squeezing the back of his head. Yeah, it's like a rear naked choke. You're squeezing here at the front. Okay, have some patience with it. So hand at the back of the head, punch the bicep in, walk this up, push my bicep out, chest out, get it tight. It's good, it's shaking, you're right. Okay, so is it? Okay, cool, see your knees. So we're here. I'm in my side right here. Maybe I've been hitting him. I'm gonna grab that head, pull it in, dig through, get my three-quarter Nelson. If I squeeze this, <coughs> that should be pretty tight. Okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna run around, break him down, catch the back of the head, punch through, walk this up, and finish with my DOS. Okay? Grab a partner, try this one out. Be careful. <laughs> I'm pushing the head down, but I can't twist it. When I go here, it pulls it in. Yeah, that made a plan. So you can kind of twist it in like that. You can't change it. It makes you do this. Yeah. <laughs> when the head goes, the body follows you. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is getting your arm deep enough if you've got short arms. Okay, just turn just a touch so they can see. Okay, that's it. So what happens when people got short arms is they try and look at the lock and that's the worst thing they can do. They go, oh. okay, this is like a piece of string here. If I want to move one end, I need to move the other end. Okay, it's a piece of string. Yeah, it's not, it's not a piece of elastic, it's a piece of string. So, move your ear back to here. That's what's going to move it around. I see it all the time, guys go, oh, I've got really short arms, look, look, it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit, and I'm like, what are you, you just... look at that, look how much comes through. So that's the first thing, yeah? Uh, secondly, don't drive forward, just drop down here to the chest, okay? Don't get to here and drive forward. There is a move here that is nice, okay? And it's, it's to step over here, like this, to mount with it, to mount it dance. But it's, it's effective from the side as well. Effects on the side of the now, we're coming to the argument now if it's a crank or not. Okay, 
Um, one of the funniest fights I've ever seen, which was just crazy. One of my students, um, JD Hilton, went out to a tournament in Italy. And he got there, and every team pulled out <laughs> because a, a team had come, I think, from Bulgaria, and they were all pro fighters. And uh, my guy just had a couple of amateur fights. And my guy went in and fought this guy. We looked up later on Shirdo, we got 30 fights, fought King of the Cage, everything. My guy chokes him unconscious with this in about 60 seconds, and then goes, Yes! And break broke his hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is like so embarrassing. But you see on the video, he's going, Yes! <laughs> But he puts the guy unconscious with this, and the guy was taking the pain, and then he went to sleep. Now, uh, I was training with a, a brilliant grappler called Ryan Hallward, so Ryan did this joke to me, and I went, oh, it was quite a prank. It was, like, that was cranking my neck a bit, and he went, oh, <laughs> man, I wish I could do it right. <laughs> well, this is one of the best grapplers in the world. And then, I was training with Rolly Delgado, another black belt, and he did it, and I went, oh, that was a crank, and he went, good. Because <laughs> his was, I don't care, you're tapped. And it was like, night and day. One guy was like, oh, I want it to be a choke. Another guy was, I was trying to tap you out, and I tapped you. It's fine. I don't care. Like, why would I care? I was trying to make you give up, and you give up. So it's like, it's just different perspectives sometimes. So you might be like, oh, you know, he's tapping, but he's not tapping to a choke. Well, what are you trying to do? Tap him out. So they worked. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, like, often the pain, if he goes through the pain, he'll, he'll get choked out eventually, which is what happens in, in the uh, JD spike. The guy was like, ah, ah. And then went to sleep. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you might go, oh, that is hurting my neck, but it might also be cutting up here. And if you're just tapping out to that, if you eventually you go to sleep anyway. Okay, but the main thing that I wanted to just talk about there was, yeah, don't look at your hands. Drop back so it goes in. And then lock it up, okay? And again, push down and lift up with your elbow so you slice his neck. But push down first, get all the pressure you can there, I'm gonna hold it there for a moment. So I'm gonna press and I'm gonna press in, I'm gonna hold. <coughs> and then staying down, I'm gonna slice my elbow back. So I got pressure in two directions. If you just push towards him and do that, obviously the pressure doesn't increase. Mm. You're just moving it. I'm actually gonna press in, press in, try and get that squeeze there. And then I'm gonna do that. So the pressure going in two directions. Okay, so I'll, I lock in here, I press down, and then I pull my elbow up towards me. Okay, like that. Yeah. So have another go. Three quarter Nelson from a side ride into the dash choke. And if he taps, he taps. That's the yeah, that's it. Okay, so try it out a few more times each. Let's go. <laughs> Turn him over and his arms out. If his arms in, and you can't get anything, you're just gonna punch him in the face. So, like, you know, if you guy on the bottom is doing this, haha, you can't get my, like, oh, I'm doing this, it's hot, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's there. So don't, you know, we're using the right tool for the job. And at the moment, we're trying to get the technique down. Okay, and it's just that, that's, that's the position, that's the movement. Okay, so if you're on the bottom and your partner's not getting it, you're doing something wrong. You need to be talking and trying to help him get it right. If you're trying to stop him learning a move that he's possibly doing for the first time, then you know, you're going to pop. Okay, <laughs> so grab your partner, let's try and get these, this sequence now. So side right, three quarter turnover, okay, three quarter now turnover, and then going in to finish with the dog. Okay, or both of you to try and get, help the other person get it right. Okay, that, that's the objective, getting some good reps in. Okay, so you can do it correctly as many times as you can. Okay, that's okay. We'll take a little break. Uh, if we want to break and then we'll come back on. Okay, so everyone just come in. As people ask stuff, then I, I will show it. You know, I'm, I'm here today uh, to help you guys, give you guys information. So if you have any questions for what would happen from here, how we do this, um, then, you know, just ask. Just ask. Okay, just ask about the DOS, like, with him staying where he is. So we'll do that, okay? You good? I have a question. Okay, that's might not be relevant. You've got to do so. We'll do this one technique yeah. and then we'll deal with that, yeah? yeah. Okay, so he's down on the horse. I'm just talking about doing the dorsal in position. You can do it here. Okay, so I'm in the side ride, the hand goes to the head, 
it's the same thing. The hand comes underneath. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this leg through and I must block his arm with my leg. Okay? So I must block on here. If I come out too far, his counter is to put this arm across my body. So move that there. Oh, I must have drew it. Okay, so I must make sure that I actually catch hold of that. Whether it's my butt touching the elbow or my leg going on top of here, as long as I've got it blocked. Okay, so I hold in the head, I sit through and I touch his arm and I come around. Okay, here. So his head is pushed down against my body and I push this around like an uppercut underneath now. There's a couple of details here. First one, I need to sit up just a little bit towards it. Okay, so when I lock, I go this way. Don't just bring the hand down. I need to close off all the gap on this side. So I push forward as I lock here. Keep his head down. Now, if I walk towards him, he will walk away from me. So that's not gonna apply pressure. So watch, I'm gonna put him on, on his left hip. And I do that by pushing my hips here and pulling my hands this way. So if you just watch, if you watch his, uh, his left hip, there. Okay, and then I walk towards him, excuse me. Like that. Okay, so now I'm putting extra pressure on the back of the head. With my chest. Nice, isn't it? Coming in quick. <laughs> if I just walked around, he would keep running around in a circle. So I want to bump him down. Mm. So now it's me running in a circle and him trying to get up to his knees. So I've got a slight, you know, a slight bit to get ahead. Okay, me racing on my back and him on his knees, he'll probably win. But him sitting on his butt, I'll, prob I'll probably win. Okay, so I'm in here. Maybe I'll hit him. I grab hold, I decide to go for this, and this, this works especially when he starts to back out a little bit. Here, I kind of started to lose him a little bit. I'll sit through, oh, punch this in. But I must push his head down so it doesn't come across my body like this. This is going to go back to me. Okay, so I'm pushing it all in like this. Okay, I'm on my side. Um, I'm pretty much, all my weight's on my hip. Okay, on my right hip. I'm not laying flat on my back, kind of just on my hip. So uppercut, sit up towards it, and lock. Okay, now you can come back this time. Okay, so I'm going to push with my belly, okay, and pull with my hands. Well, my belly pushes, and I pull with my hands. And then I'm running towards it, like that, okay? But as with all submissions, most submissions, pressure with your arms first, and then your body. Otherwise, you're fighting yourself. So don't do this. Don't run, and then squeeze, because you're fighting against yourself. Because, like, you know, you're coming off his head, and then trying to squeeze his head in. Squeeze his head in, and then walk around. Um, I see this a lot with guys, guys get a little bit carried away with submissions. They use their body before their arms. So like guys, guys will get a guillotine and they'll jump back and they'll start pushing with their legs and then trying to pull up on the head. Well, it's not locked up yet. You're trying to fight yourself. You're trying to close this gap while pushing him away. The guillotine, you should lock it in as tight as you can and bring him down and tighten it up, squeeze and then push away. Same with uh, an ankle lock. Yeah, I see guys get a loose ankle lock and then start pushing away and then trying to close this up. Well, you're, you're fighting yourself. You know, it's exactly the same with this. Don't fight yourself. Don't run around him and then squeeze because you're fighting yourself. Yeah, you, you're trying to move away from him and pull him in at the same time. Squeeze him in and then apply pressure with your body. Okay, does that make sense? So one more time, he's down. Down here, I'm gonna grab the head. I'm gonna sit through, dig the weights on my hip. I sit up a little bit. I bump him down and I squeeze in as I walk in to get that submission. Okay, just come on super quick. Grab your partner, this is a sit through DOS. Okay, let's try it out. So quick break after this, so I get this one down. Okay, try and if you can, I'm in two sequences. We'll do a crucifix sequence, and uh, if I can, I'm gonna do the <coughs> tilting sequence as well, okay? Um, we just had a quick question about the, the shin across the back of the leg. That's a big part of this game as well, especially if someone does uh, inversion. So they roll and invert, uh, rather than just turn. So, mm -hmm. so he turns, just, if you just turn around just a little bit so they can see your legs. <coughs> as well as the side right here, I'm coming around to the back. Yeah, there are other positions. You can have one knee down, like this. Uh, another move is if I shook him forward or move him, is to drive my shin across the back like this. Okay, but um, normally he'll point his toes so there won't be pressure on his ankle too much. Have you got a bad ankle or are you okay? No, I just, yeah, I can feel the pressure. Yeah, normally he'll flatten it out a bit so there's, but he's just holding here. This is mainly to stop inversions. Because if I'm here and he drops this shoulder and swings this leg out wide, so he drops this shoulder, so right under your leg and look that way towards them and then swing this leg in a big circle. That's it. You get these kind of inversions in guys coming back, okay? However, if I keep my knee here and drive it forward and hold my hand at his hip, if he does that, here, this allows me to either go leg drag here, or if the leg comes around, to back step through, 
and sit out with legs. Okay? So by him turning, I'm pinning one of his legs to the ground the whole time, rather than both legs spinning around. I'm like, well, okay, I'll take this leg and just leave it there, so when the other one swings, that one's out of the way already, and I can deal tucking this one, ducking under this one, doing whatever as we get there. Okay, so that works very well. Um, in the, uh, in the, the Diaz fight I was talking about earlier, he was trying to do a different inversion to get to a knee bar, but just he was doing the same thing, shin across the back of the leg. It does work very well in that position. Okay, so I'm going to do the crucifix now. Uh, the crucifix can happen if you put both hands down, you just scoop it up. But if it's a bit tighter, you can actually make it happen as well. So what I'm going to do is, from the side ride, my knee is going to dive into this gap here. So see my hand was already on the arm, that's going to be perfect for this. So I come in and I drive through. See I've got my knee inside and my hand catching his bicep like this. Okay, and I'm just going to use that to move a little bit. Okay, don't keep it tight, that's fine. So, so move it a little bit and then I'm going to scoop it. Because I'm only going to get that at the most. And then I'm going to hook my foot in and scoop. Now, it depends what he does with his arm. Most guys won't leave the hand forward. So if you just put the hand forward. Like he did the right thing, which he took in his hand back. If he keeps his hand forward, obviously I'm just going to pull that up. <coughs> You know, he's just put himself in a submission like straight away. So if, he, if I get there, I'm going to sit back on his shoulder and just pull that up and he's, he's done. Okay, so nine times out of ten, as I hook that, he hides it. So see how high I am on his shoulder? Here, I'm hooked up. Okay, not his wrist, and then I'm nice and high. So now I'm in nice and tight. And obviously, I can just hit him all day here. I can hit him all day. Okay, uh, once you start hitting him, there's probably going to be an attempt at a roll or turn. And there's two ways we can go. I can take my feet to the front and take him over my, 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 my right hip, or I can go over my right shoulder. So I'll show you the right hip first. So watch my feet come this way, and we end up going down here. Okay? So I end up uh, in the crucifix. And he goes back. But the most common thing is I'm hitting him, and he ducks his, his, his head down and tries to roll me over. So what, yeah, so I push off this foot and come over here. So I'm around to the back. Okay, so this is the position we're going to get to. Usually I go straight to a harness, so I'm reaching around, catching my own hand. But I've got to make sure I've got this arm, so if I lose this arm, he spins out. So I'm making sure I've got both his arms, and he's in this crucifix here. If you feel him slide off you a little bit, that's, that can be a problem. Pull your knees and your hands this way. Bring him back on top of you a little bit, okay? Don't let him slide down. Not the end of the world, North South Choke, Kimura, if he slides down. But I'm going to try and just drag him on top of me a little bit here, okay? So I've got him on top. Good. Don't lose this arm. If you lose this arm, you're in trouble. So one more time, he's up. So I'm here, been hitting him. Drive my knee in, catch his bicep. And I'm going to use my knee and my hand to flare his elbow. Here, and pull it out. Scoop it up with my foot, pull it down behind me so I've got it nice and locked up. Okay, here. So I'm sitting on him, pinching this tight. I reach through and grab his wrist on the far side, pull that in. This is just three shots three shots, okay? Most guys are just gonna freak out. Uh, the one thing you have to be careful of, especially in MMA, these really strong guys can sometimes get to their feet and just lift you up in the air, okay? Like, it gets to happen, so just stand up. So obviously, just, <laughs> obviously, you've just gotta knock him. Like, he, he lifts his head up to stand up, you've just gotta smash him across the face as hard as you can and try and knock him out. Um, you can do a one-arm rear naked choke as well. You can come through, dig this underneath, and then just put, sorry, just pull my elbow up. Um, but here, just hit, hit, hit. Either knees, feet to the front and roll him over, or he tips this shoulder down, go with him, and see, I'll pull him up on top of me. Okay, here for the crucifix position. So we're gonna get to here, I'm gonna do a couple of finishes from this position here. Okay, so grab your partner, try this crucifix. So you'll scoop up that arm, scoop up that arm. Again, you can orientate yourself in the same way, I can quickly look. It might be a case of, you know, I try to spiral ride, I try to get up, I go to spiral ride, and, it's, uh, and I just kind of start to hook and hook and catch till I get it. Okay? If his arms are out, and he's got his weight on his arms there, and I just start hacking on it until I catch it, I'll get it. Okay? Or punching him in the face, or going back to his face. I'm doing it a little bit tighter, he's down on his elbows, and I'm kind of forcing him in. So I dig through, I either touch his bicep, or occasionally I'll grab my own knee, and just pull. Okay? And then I hook over the top and just dig in until I get it. If I miss it, I've not lost anything, I'm back in the same position. Grab the wrist and pull the wrist in. Both his arms should be tied up. Just start, start working him over. 
I can take him this way, or at least try to do that, and if he pulls back the other way, that's great. So I roll over, okay, here. Now, okay, so we're here. This hand, if your chin's down, don't try and get your wrist under. Look how thick my wrist is. Look how thin my thumb is. Get my thumb under his neck. Lift it with my thumb. It's what I do from a rear naked choke. Get my, this, this here, if you touch your chin down, that's not gonna fit. That's not gonna fit, but I do this. That will lift it up. Dig around, nice and deep. This hand clasps onto his back, and I pull my left elbow. Sometimes they might have to use their feet, by the way, so I'm gonna pull my left elbow down behind me. There. Okay, I'm not gonna let go uh, for the, the full rear naked. I'm just gonna work this. Uh, the occasional counter, these guys push back into you. Like that, here. Bert, watch my right knee. Just take it back. Okay, so someone lifts and drives back. He gives me the space to take it back anyway, so it's not too much of a problem. Mm. So we're here. I've got him down, and I'm, I'm gonna take my thumb and dig it under his chin and lift his chin up. Okay, the wrist isn't gonna work. I always, always do that. I do it for the same for my rear naked normally as well. Get my shoulder behind his neck, dig nice and deep, and grab on. Okay, and if this takes two or three goes, it takes two or three goes. If he tries to bring his hand up to defend, he's gonna be blocking it, getting my hand in the way, and getting hold. Okay, catching either his fingers like this or catching his wrist. And then, first thing is squeeze and push my shoulder forward, and then pull my left elbow back. So it's like a slice. So I get deep, and then I pull back. Okay, but keeping this hand in. Okay, so I'm here, like this. My head and my shoulder push in. See, look, that squeeze there, and then I pull back. Okay, and of course, as I say, if it drives up, it, ah, so it's like hard to get that choke in a little bit. I just slide my right knee underneath him, get behind him, and then I can just come and finish with my choke as normal. Okay, so this is the one arm rear naked choke. But you have to lift, dig, 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 and then push in and pull back. So if my hand is, if you think my hand goes behind his head, and then I pull through, so I pull it through his neck. Don't bring it around like that. Go deep, put, lock this behind, squeeze, and then pull this through his neck like that. Okay. Grab your partner, try that. One arm, red naked choke, and the crucifix. Okay, same position. Uh, we'll finish from there. And then I'll try and get one more sequence in. I do show a lot of stuff as you might have noticed there. Uh, try and follow. It's all from the same position, so try and follow as best you can. So he's down. I'm in my side right. I could have switched sides, I could have followed him, but all the stuff we've been doing, I could have attacked his neck. But I'm going to go for that arm, try and pull it in, catch it. Got it all hooked up, scooped up. I catch him. Maybe I try and roll him this way, that doesn't work. I duck down. If we go the other way, and I'm going for his neck here. If his head goes this way, it's not too bad because I just kind of work the way around behind him. If he puts his head down by my legs, that can be a bit difficult. I can't quite get here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start smashing him in the face like this. Here, here like this, here. You know, so I have three shots. He might, if he's smart, punch out between his legs. Punch this hand between your legs. Between my legs? Oh. oh, okay. So watch, I hit, so I hit him like this and he's probably going to turn. So as I'm hitting him, no, he's not going to turn that way. <laughs> well, I'm going to catch his chin. So as he comes up, scoot back, catch his neck. Okay. Woo! Just it. Yeah. So I caught him here. Maybe we roll. He took. So he puts his head down. Start smashing him in the face here. I might even put this behind here like this. Here. Like this. I just keep hitting him. Just keep hitting him. But I hit him and I miss it. So as he goes, I'm going to push this into his jaw and I'm going to sit up. So as he goes, I sit up and I'm catch him with the chin. Shoot back. Go for good team. Sorry. Any kind of good team you want, I'm doing a Marcelo team. Uh, I'll put the elbow high like this. You can catch it here. If you've got it in the butterfly, keep the butterfly out. So there's not got any base. So if it's here, kick out. If you can bring your legs around, bring your legs around. Any good team. All good things are fine. <laughs> so, as all good things, you shouldn't be thinking about a good team. Okay, you should be thinking about moving. So, I capture his arm, start hitting him. Just start whacking him like this. Just start hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. 
somehow, I'm hitting him and this comes out. Keep my hand at the jaw and scoot back. Now, place my hand and scoot back. He's thinking about getting up, but I'm already under his neck. So, any guillotine he wants to do from here, I can bring my leg over off or kick away or do any kind of guillotine. But as before, keep it tight and don't push, don't push away until you've got it. Okay, otherwise, you slide off. You see, the motion is this I'm hitting. Okay, he moves, just keep that under his chin. Just do this here. Yeah. And as he comes up, his head will be here and you'll have his neck. And then you can do any kind of guillotine, kick his legs out, leg over the back, close guard, whatever guillotines you know. Okay, let me see that one again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's on the fours. I'm in here, I pull it in, I catch, I start hitting him, we roll. I start hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. I turn his face, his legs if I feel like he's See, if I feel like he's getting away from me, I turn to face him a little bit. And as he goes, face, scoot back. Now I have to go under his neck. Yeah. Okay, so he's come up into a guillotine position. If you want to pull him in for closed, that's fine. You need a guillotine there. Like that. Okay? Yeah? So, cool. Go on and try that out. So you should spin out. Do it slow, because you've got to get the feel to the guillotine. So don't, don't spin out quick. Spin out slow and try and settle and scoot back into the guillotine. Try and get your back straight so you sat up right. Okay, let's try it out. <laughs> Keep hammer fisting him in the face. He's like, turn away. That's when he should turn up. Okay, so just wait for a second. Just stand up for a second. So I'm hitting him, basically, the idea is I'm hitting him like this, and as he turns away from that, that hand's going to come around his neck. That's it. Okay? So I'm holding him so he can't turn away. He's going to go. No. And then as he goes, I just pull him into this and move my butt back. That's the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm not letting him turn. I'm not letting him turn. And if he does go, I just spin that around and lose neck. Okay? You've got, to, you've got to go from here, scoot back, and catch that neck. And you could get up, you could pull him into guard. You can kick his legs out, you can do whatever kind of guillotine you like to do. Just pull him in for the basic one, so that he should fall into it. Okay, that person, if he doesn't get back up to his, his knees, you'll be hitting him or taking his back. If you stop like this, I'm just going to put the hooks in and finish him with a choke again. Yeah, so nice and slow, when he lets go, and then just turn it like I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something. Yeah, and you just follow him and let him fall into that choke. Yeah. So a couple more guys, let's try this out. Crucifix, hammer fist to uh, guillotine. Yeah. Do one move. This is uh, a tilt. And I use this just to off balance, just to move someone around. Also to take the back in certain submissions as well. Okay, so uh, if you're down on all fours. Okay, so the position I take from here is I'm going to put this knee against on my hand inside here. So before I'm going to side right like this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my knees okay, like this, and I'm basically in like a knee on stomach position, like that. Okay. Right here. And again, this is great just to hit the hole like this. If there was lots of space, I would just put my hooks in. So I'm assuming the elbows are in, the knees are in a little bit, and there's not a lot of space. But the hand should still be able to fit inside. Now what I'm going to do is I'm base my hand, <coughs> and I'm going to move myself back like this. So I move my foot to the other side of my leg on the outside. And I'm gonna snap my hand towards me. It's gonna be like an elastic band. I'm gonna stretch it out and then snap it towards me at 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm here, I move back like this and I snap it towards me. Okay, so I'm trying to sit here between my legs. So I go back. So my leg is like a block against his, like this. And I sit the other side of it and I try and bring him with me here and sit him between my legs. There's a few things that can happen here. Either I go harness straight away, and now I've got a harness and I'm looking for my hooks, or occasionally, guys are really strong, and as I snap them down, they start to get away from me, and I use that to put my hook in. So often what I'll do is I'll go here, I'll pull him down, and he won't quite go, and as he goes back, I just come in and put my hook in. Okay, here. I use this a lot to get a rolling arm off. Some guys are super tight here, and it gets really, really tight, so arms are in and everything. Yeah, and it's like you can't, can't get a lot, you're trying to move them around. I can't get a lot, so what I'll do is I'll snap them back this way here, and as I come in, I hook and start to climb up. Start to look for the arm, okay? So, I'm just trying to open him up a bit. I'm just trying to open him up. So I'm here, and I pull him down. And this could be for hooks, harness, okay? Uh, sometimes as I do this, it'll be coming back up, his elbow will be out. 
and I'll get back into my crucifix. I'm just trying to open him up. I'm just trying to open him up. Okay, so um, this is very similar to the spiral. Spiral was driving him this way and pulling on the hip, and this one's just pulling on the hip. So it's like the spiral, but kind of without going underneath the arm. So I just move back like this. 45. It's got to be directly away from this far shoulder. And then I pull and turn like that. And that's the simplest way to go there. You can do crab right like this. You can do hooks. You can pull it in, stretch, and then go hooks. I start to come round. Any, any kind of back taking moves from there. But I just want to do just the, the idea of moving him for now. Okay? Because often when I'm here and I'm hitting him, I might just pull him like this here. And then hit him. And hit him, move him around, move him around. Okay, as you get back up, I come around to that side, right hit him there, spiral right him again, right, move back in. We'll move him around again. I want to be able to control him and move him around, even if I only get the one hook in. And I decide to go for the arm. I'm trying to open up space and maneuver, move him around. And one more time, the tilt. So this is a back tilt, so I'm here, put one knee down, one hand out. So I'm holding inside the groin and I'm locked to his hips for the moment. My leg touches his leg and I move back and I sit on the outside of my foot. It's very, very sharply snap my elbow and my hand towards me as I turn. Like this. So all I get is that. Mm. That's enough to my hooking. That's fine. That's okay. But if I can move him all the way, I'll go harness and then start to look for the back. Okay? So grab your partner, try the tilt to the back corner. Okay, let's go. So he's down. If there is space, I'm going to put my hooks in. I'm going to take his back. So he's got to be super tight so that I have to take away that option. Now he's, he's strong in a plus sign. <coughs> there and there. See, look, that's the widest bit. So narrow, wide, narrow. So that way he's got his best base. Okay, and he's heading his feet this way. So that plus sign there, he's strong. The X, weak. Is weak. So me taking him this way, that's not really very good. But me taking him this way, easy, easy. Okay. So I've got to take him over that weak point. Again, if he put his legs out to base, all my hooks going again. So if he's pulled in tight, it means his feet are tucked in. It means his arms are tucked in. His chin's down. So here, 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 going to be the weaker spots. Well, I'm, I'm not taking him this way because you see there's that little rock over his knee that doesn't quite work. I'm actually tucking my foot into his and then bringing him over this way, like that, pulling him down to bring him out. And again, all I might do is break him to here. So he put his hands out and he moves. Here, yeah, I might come back in. I might pull him this way, hit one. Yeah, that's what it might be. Just want that slight pull, pull, just to off balance him. So again, hand goes out. Oh, I like to sit in between my legs. But you could just as easily stay up like this here and just start working him over here, keeping him on his butt. Okay? Grab your partner, just try this tilt and I'll put it together to finish. <coughs> Go on side, everybody uh, in front of me please. Everybody in front of me if you can. Everyone in front, just so you can all see from the same side. Okay, so you're going to put it together now. <coughs> very, very slow. Just take your time and try the different position. So moving around behind him. Okay, using side ride, spiral riding him to keep him down, tilting him to a back corner, going to the Nelson, three quarter and taking him down, uh, and using the, the crucifix stuff as well, and the ground and pound. So just start in the side here, hip to hip, hand inside, pull him towards you, blocking the biceps. This obviously feeds into here, and into your strikes as well. Okay, so I'm hitting this side, loose, whacking this over this side here, so I'm coming underneath and hitting. Okay, if he starts to base up, I'm going to get here, chest down, run him down. Okay, if he manages to get back up, I'll stay with him, stay with him, stay with him. He comes back up, hitting him, hitting him. If there's space, I'll hook hold of his arm. I'll be hitting him, pulling his wrist in, hitting him. If he rolls, stay with, come around, go for my finish. Or if he gets his head away from me, I'll be hitting him. Scoot back, he comes up. I'll get my gizzards in. Okay, so then again, hitting him, hitting him from the side, switching my legs, pulling him back, trying to take his back, or if he goes away from me, I can put my hook in as I go, 
or I could just tilt him down. I could just be here, just pull him like this here. Even if it's just to get hold of an arm, just to keep him down a bit, just to keep on him, just to keep on him here like this here. Working him over. Working him over. Hands down. Whoop. Scoop that up. Start working him over again here. Staying with him the whole time. Staying with him the whole time. Okay, so side ride, spiral ride, crucifix, ground and pound, tilt him back. If at any point you want to come in, start to take him down with this into the DOS, or sit through with the DOS here, and bump him down. You can pick it from there as well. Okay? Now, it should all be able to fit it together, but nice and slow, controlling, moving him around, bringing him back down, hitting him, attacking his neck, and tying up his arm with your legs. Okay? Uh, but it's slow and controlled, just trying to get those reps in that you're going to be happy with in the years to come. Right, okay, my technique is where I want it to be. All right, so um, grab a partner, switch in your own time, last five minutes or so. Try this out slow. Try and answer questions as you go. Okay, what should I do here? Okay, so try to stand up, what should I be doing? Spiral ride. He's hand based out, what should I do? Scoop it up with a crucifix. Um, don't try and create more problems than you've got the answers to at the moment, okay? Don't go like five problems ahead when you haven't solved solve that first one yet. Okay, that's a fail, a fail grade. Yeah, try and just try and solve each one and answer the question that's there, yeah? I'll come around and give you a hand. All right, so grab your partner, find some space, let's try and put this together. Use all the control you can, and tie them up and look for the finish. Okay, so that's a sequence of, of moves from the, the turtle position. Um, some wrestling is the base, and then taking it into jiu-jitsu moves. Generally, we've got a phrase at our gym, uh, wrestle the jits guys and jits the wrestlers. So if someone's like this and looking like they're going to sit to guard and stuff, that's the time to front headlock them, tilt them, spiral ride them, you know, rag them around a bit, lift them, throw them down, drive their face into the ground. Um, but if the guy's like a wrestler and he's got a like, really good base there, make him base, put hooks in, take his back, choke him. You know, like, I'm trying to try and, I don't know, if the guy's a really strong, aggressive wrestler, I'm not going to wrestle him. If he's trying to keep base, I'm not going to try and just break his base. Mm. I'm going to go, okay, base, and then I'll use jiu-jitsu to wrap myself around him. So you base, and I'll wrap my arm around your neck and lock that up and squeeze in for that instead. Okay, or you base, and I'll wrap it up with my legs. And it doesn't matter if my back touches the mat because it's not wrestling, it's fine. So you can roll and flip out, and my back will touch the mat, and that's okay because I'm on the neck. Okay, and the same with this guy's like looking like he's going to go to guard. I'm staying behind him, I'm staying behind him, I'm grabbing wrists, I'm driving his face into the ground. You know, I'm doing that prison jits and getting behind him and driving his face down and I'm hitting and I'm hitting and I'm hitting. So it's, it's just a general principle that we tend to stick to. Um, and there's both aspects there. The, the moving around him and driving him and tilting him and spiral riding him and nelsoning him, that's like wrestling stuff. Yeah? The hooking in the legs and starting to wrap myself around his neck, wrap myself around his arm, you know, going for the darts, that kind of stuff, that's more the jiu-jitsu. It's all just grappling though. It is all just grappling. Um, Hopefully, you know, there's some bit there that will fit into your game, or you at least you get a feel of how you can actually really dominate someone from there. Open up gaps, throw strikes, and start to move them around. It's not just a case, it's not just a case of putting your hooks in. But you've got to stop the guy standing up, you've got to stop the guy facing out with his hands, and you've got to be able to attack you know, the neck and the arms and tie them up in different ways. Um, any quick questions on the material from there today? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, okay. Um, but it'll, it, hopefully it'll fit together and, and you remember some of it. Um, my, you know, the biggest thing is if you go away and work this and it works for you, that's, that, that's the best thing for me. So um, hopefully some of you will take this away and practice it and get it to work for you in the gym. I've shown this kind of stuff to a lot of people and they've used it immediately in training and in fights as well. Um, so you know, that, that's, that's my, my big wish is that you just go and try it out and um, hopefully it works in your game. Thank you very much guys. Cheers. <laughs>